Sometimes I think I can tell the future. Well, not really, but like, I feel like telepathy and like intuition and that kind of psychic sixth sense stuff is like low key real, like in a way. Like, how do you explain when you get that gut feeling before something bad happens? Or when you know the rest of your friend's story from the first line they say? Or like, have you ever not looked at your phone for hours and then you look at it the second someone starts ringing you? Like, I know stuff like that could sometimes be explained by like, reading a situation well or knowing people well enough, but like, this is a little more than just that. It's like, the universe is messing around with stuff and I'm in on the joke. Or it could just be a coincidence, but it's too often to be a coincidence. I don't think we should always just accept things we're told. And I don't think it should be wrong to question things that are just true. Like, I wonder why it's so crazy to question things if you know, you know? And why do people get so mad about it? I wonder why we feel the need to make other people see things the way that we see them. Like, mac and cheese. I mean, in theory, the mac in mac and cheese could be an abbreviation for mac and cheese. Although, then it would be mac and cheese and cheese. Personally, more cheese sounds good to me. But I mean, there's nothing to say that it could be. It feels fair to say that it could be. Most people just get mad when I bring it up and say that it's dumb. Or like the moon. There's pretty compelling evidence to support the fact that the moon is fake. I mean, first of all, scientists don't know where it came from. They just don't know how it got there. And whenever scientists have tried to create moonquakes to measure seismic activity, the moon just rang like a bell for several hours, like it was hollow. I don't think it's fair to dismiss the theory just because it's not the official story. I think there's more value in listening to each other than dismissing each other. Anyway, does it really matter? The moon's still going to be there and it's still going to look pretty. And even if there are creatures living inside the moon, at least they seem to be looking out for us. That's pretty cool. Nothing's as cool as it was. Like, back in senior infants, nothing needed to be important, just interesting. Like frog spawn. Why did we learn about frog spawn? Why can't humans have any cool evolutions? It's not like human bodies are all that interesting, we just know how to make fire and inflation rates. Caterpillars get to become butterflies, like, why can't we grow wings in our 20s. Hatchlings become turtles. Ducklings become swans. Is that right? You know, the ugly duckling. Why did he get to become a swan? Was he like the chosen one or the child of Lear? Why did we get told that story while learning about other scientific animal journeys? It must be true. Just a few ducklings like one in every ten they go into a cocoon and they wait and they wait and they emerge the glorious ethereal swan a swan that bit my fingers off that was a dream right obviously i have all my fingers must have been a dream i need to tell you about the dream i had I wanted to give you an easter egg for your birthday but you didn't want it because you were in a rush for a train and the bus station was covered by the new extra vision so that's why I couldn't return any of your calls and then the bike repair shop wouldn't take back the wheels so now I'm stuck with them too. Great. Anyway, by the time I got back to the harbour you were already gone. Apparently the ship took a left and hit an iceberg. Maybe in 50 years this scenario will be impossible what with the inevitable melting of the iceberg but this is now and I'm just telling you what happened. I wrote all of this down to tell you in a letter, but I guess you never got it. Maybe the postman read it. Maybe he delivered it to the wrong address and the wrong person read it. Doesn't matter. Anyway, bring an umbrella. You're gonna get caught in the rain. You'll have an umbrella with you. It's meant to rain later. You're quite responsible. I bet you never forget a birthday. 
Not that you write it down, that's a bit much now, but you just remember it. Like a sixth sense. And you'll remember that I'll tell you tulips are my favourite flowers and you'll bring me some when we meet next. You have brown eyes. I mean, I can't really see them that well, but brown eyes and a mole on your cheek and dimples. Or maybe just the one. Dimple. Singular. And you like the coffee I make and we have inside jokes and watch game shows and have comfortable silences. And we're perfect together and grow old together. And we can afford rent in Dublin or maybe move to the west and live by the sea and we paint all door pink to humour me, you joke. And we garden with a patio table and two chairs and we're happy, like so happy, like outrageously happy, like how is this our life? What a happy. But I'm just staring at you on the Lewis. Probably weird at this point. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but they're all the same. All these songs I hear on the radio, they're all party this and fucking that. Where's our culture gone? I bet half the people I see in front of me haven't even read a book in a year. All I want to do is bust out the shadow new to pop and have an intellectually stimulating conversation about, about quiche. Quiche? Fucking quiche, what am I like? It's like, I try so hard to be so authentically a fucking shithead. It's like, well, first of all, I can't even eat quiche. I'm lactose intolerant. But why am I trying so hard to be the person who takes all the air out of the room? Why do I try so hard to mansplain to everybody? I wasn't always like this. I was never the kind of person that would tell you that a good red wine has sediment at the end or that Debaser by Pixies is based off of some stupid fucking French absurdist film that I haven't even seen. Even the music I listen to, I can't even open Spotify listen to a song within the last five years because all I'm supposed to do is listen to 80s prog rock. One of these days, I'll go back to the way I was. One of these days, I will stop being a fake person. One of these days. Oh, this is my stuff. Oh, there's Jen and Leo. They're like a package deal, it's like whole thing. Oh, hey guys. Oh, I brought you the uh, Brie from the Delicatessen and oh, the Albarina. Oh, I forgot the wine glasses. One of my life. Rushbrook northbound train platform in the piss end of Cork, alone. Knowing I wouldn't see a familiar face for five hours while I watched my phone battery drain away. When the train finally came into the platform, the high-pitched horn dazed me. My issue is, I don't think I left that dazed state until I got home that night. It was just this sort of flux. A train is an odd place in concept. A bunch of strangers pay to sit in silence in a motorised metal can hurtling at high speeds towards the next place. When I entered this new environment I was met with the people whose presence I would be in for hours, yet their shielded faces protected them as their eyes pierced my soul in what was a vulnerable moment. That's when the dream started. I started living in dreams and dreaming in life. It was like that recurring dream where you're falling but it never ended and I was just falling and falling and falling and falling and falling and eventually it lasted so long the sensation of falling fused with my body and I was just free falling sideways in the general direction of home. I was faced with the irrelevance of my existence as Phoebe Bridgers sang I know the end in my ears and it was like the dream world was starting to suit me. <laughs> 